right. Are we live? Are we doing this? All right, cool. Nice. Well, we'll make sure everyone's getting tuned in here. Then we'll go ahead and get started. It's about time, so uh, maybe let's not delay. So uh, we'll go ahead and dive in. So th those that were with us last week, uh, we started talking about um, something we're starting here. We did episode one, and we're going to continue to do these episodes. Uh, the goal here is to talk about best practices when it comes to public engagement and also share how you can um, execute those best practices within the public input platform. So it's kind of like a twofer, see a little bit of the platform, uh, learn a little bit about what's going on. We're calling this public input live. And I jokingly say until marketing tells me that there's a better name for this. So uh, anyways, uh, I'm Michael Murphy, uh, but I'll do a full introduction. But first, let's meet uh, the other co-host here that's with us. Uh, and Sophie, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm Sophie Batar. Um, I'm a solutions architect here at Public Input, uh, in case you missed it from the last one. Um, basically, what that means, I work with the sales team and with prospective customers to just scope um, their needs and scope different solutions that we have in the platform and um, try to line those up as best as possible. Excellent. Yeah, uh, definitely. And for myself, I'm partnerships director, which is essentially a fancy word for I work with consultants. Our consultants are our partners in deploying the platform. Um, and what we do here is just try to make sure that they can get as much value as possible. Uh, we really do like basically two main users of our platform and that's uh, agencies that license our platform, the consultants that work for those agencies to execute work on their behalf, um, as well as just random consultants that are just have seen our platform, know how well it, it can work for them and the value it creates for their efforts, and they'll just license it for one-off projects. Um, so those are kind of like the two ways that folks get to deploy some of the tools that we're going to be talking about here today. Um, perfect. So what we're going to be doing uh, today is step two of reach. And as we're building this, we're like, man, this kind of feels like engage. Um, and so it's a little bit of reach, a little bit engage, and we'll talk about why it's reach um, as we kind of get into it a little bit, but you'll also see that it's very much uh, engage. So we're going to be talking about kind of like survey building, and we want to like dispel two or three big things, right, when it comes to like doing surveys with the, the public, right? One of the things that we think is, is that like we only do engagement on like the biggest efforts, right, like the big projects. Now we're going to put a, you know, a bunch of resources behind it and execute these big engagement efforts. And in reality, if we're trying to create engagement that's like ongoing and like have our, the best possible communities that we could have, is ongoing engagement is what's going to be most beneficial. Because sometimes those big efforts, someone can, can like provide their feedback, but there's so much going on that they may never, the feedback loop wasn't closed, and then they feel like they haven't been heard. And the next one that comes up, they won't really engage with. So if we can uh, what do we call it? Low stakes? Is that what you said? Yep. Yeah, like low, if we can have like low stakes engagement and not like just the biggest stuff, you're going to see that people come to the table a lot more frequently and, and provide their feedback. So we want to kind of dispel the myth that it's only for the biggest projects. Um, you can use this platform and in, in, in surveys and engagements for even, even uh, small engagement efforts. Also want to define engagement like a little bit differently. Again, we think big projects and engagement could be absolutely anything. It could be any anything that you're looking to get in, information from the public. There's a lot of fun ways that we can do that. I mean, idea boards, uh, mapping, um, what else do we have? Just general search, maybe comments, uh, a lot of different ways that we can do that. Anything else come to mind, Sophie? Yeah, like um, you can even set up questions to be almost like quizzes where you'll have like a correct answer and kind of regardless of how they respond. Um, uh, everybody will be informed of the actual correct answer. Yeah, I love that. And that's a great way to like educate as well. Like not just like gather information, but as someone's doing an engagement, they're actually learning a little bit while they're doing it because they're seeing like the right answer, um, which is perfect. So again, engagements for anything. And the last myth that we want to dispel is um, that when you do more, <laughs> I told this joke when we were, when we were, oh uh, yeah, shoot, Sophie's going to kill me. I told this joke, I said, you know, people say like more money, more problems. Well, they also say like more engagement, more problems, right? Like, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't have to be true because the problem is the reason why it's more problems is because uh, it can be difficult to like, like manage all that data, especially if it's like, 
you need to respond to like public comments or something like that. And you're like, man, if we go out there and, and like all these people come to the table, we're not going to have any way to actually uh, communicate back or like do what we need to do to like handle these projects or these comments correctly. Uh, so all joking aside, it can be a very big deal. But when you have the right tools, and the right resources, it can streamline some of those efforts and make that pretty easy to do. We're not going to get into that part of it on this particular episode because that's going to be more of like in our engage. Uh, no, our analyze. Is that right? Probably on our analyze, we'll get into kind of the uh, responses and, and doing some analysis. Um, but those are the big things we want to kind of talk about today. And we're going to show, well, actually, I'll, I'll give it to, back to Sophie and Sophie can talk about what we'll be going over today and then we'll get started. Yeah, so um, we're going to build out a, a quick project. So um, we'll actually add a question back to that same project page that we were working in last time. Um, and then we'll also just kind of talk through a couple of examples of um, how some of our clients have been able to implement um, all these different sort of best practices uh, in terms of ways to uh, build out a survey. So um, we'll walk through that as well. And um, Murphy, did you want to add anything or should I just go ahead and um, screen share here? I think it's cool. Let's go ahead and get in the screen share and we'll actually look at um... Like not only like like I said, we'll we'll actually show how you can like put some of this into practice, and we'll show how you can like build on the public input platform. Yeah, absolutely. So okay, let's get started here. So again, um, we're in that same exact project page that we built out last time. So we're just gonna use this probably for most of these sessions, just to kind of um, keep it consistent. So here's our pretty pictures that we uploaded last time. And we're going to scroll down to this project questions and dynamic content section. So let's go ahead and add a question here. And what this page brings up here is a whole host of different question types. Um, I'll kind of point this out here too. You can browse examples of surveys that we've built. Um, if you just kind of want to get some ideas on particular topics, you know, how, how some questions uh, should be worded and stuff like that. Um, some of these question types, uh, you're probably familiar with them. They're going to be your kind of just basic multiple choice or open-ended. You know, please leave your comment here with just a simple comment box. Um, and then some are a bit more advanced and, and kind of interesting um, down, down here. So I'll talk through a couple of these. Um, so there's, there's this question with correct answer that we mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, so I can, so kind of one way to think of this in terms of like an example, um, let's say we want to educate the public on a complex topic, just in order to ask for some very specific feedback. This is a great way to do that. Um, we can, you know, first ask the question, make sure that everybody's aligned on what the answer of that question is, and then kind of move through the survey from there. Um, one way we can also do that is through multiple options where we can actually set up pictures and images. So they're not just selecting text on a screen when they're selecting their option. Um, there's also an Im image associated with it. So they actually, um, you know, they can kind of identify exactly what that looks like. I, I've seen that used a lot. Sorry, I hop in there. I've seen that used a lot like uh, consultants. Sometimes they call it like a visual preference survey. So it's like, hey, if we're gonna be doing some design layout features, um, like which would you prefer? Um, and it can also be because there's so much context in an, in an, in, in an image that sometimes like if you didn't have an image, people might not understand what you're talking about. Um, and maybe we could show an example of that here. Yeah. Well, not, not right now, but when we get to the examples. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and then there's some interesting ones here to idea boards. So this is really these these open ended um, comment or sorry, sorry, question types here are really useful for when uh, you're just sort of wanting to get some baseline engagement in the community, maybe just kind of get a pulse on how folks are feeling about a certain uh, concern or issue or, or maybe initiative that's coming up. Um, these are great question types to use in, in that in that sense. We won't talk about it now, but like a lot of times open ended questions or like people try to avoid them because it's like, how do I get data from an open ended question or a comment? Uh, our platform does have some capability to create comment clouds. Uh, do different uh, sentiment analysis, uh, a lot of different features there that can be make 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 doing those types of questions a little bit more approachable than it would be if you were using some other type of platform. So that's a just want to make sure I plug that there. I think that's important. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll actually go ahead and I'll build one here. So um, we're kind of there's a bit of a workflow through this. So it's not just going to you know give us a bunch of options and text boxes that we need to like know how to fill in right away. Um, so let's do, um, what do you like most about 
these sessions so far. And I encourage anybody to actually um, go in and answer and, and kind of respond to this if they want to as well. Nice. You have to show them your link. Oh, wait, no, we'll do that after we show the page. This is perfect. <laughs> do you want to talk through some of these uh, different settings here? Yeah, so I think that this is important. So not something that you're going to see in like every other uh, survey platform. So when, when it comes to engagement, like there's an option here as, as an administrator setting this up, you can decide how much data you want to collect from the public as they're engaging. So you can see like the top two toggles is like collect name and email or require name and email. It's like, just know that if you require it for this particular question, um, it, it, it's going to lower the amount of people that actually engage in that question. But the cool thing is that you can set those kind of criteria up like we did last week. We can set up like a, a signing criteria at like the highest level of the project page, but you can also uh, do it at the individual like question level. So if there's certain questions that if people respond, you need to know who they are, you can do it at that question level. But you're going to see a lot of different options here, like toxicity filters. That's so great. So for example, let's say you're doing, we're going to allow public comments and we want those comments to public uh, or to publish like in a feed below the below the question hey that's awesome except if you got someone dropping a bunch of f-bombs in there or being like super aggressive about something and you're like whoa bro like let's just chill here a second um we can actually put toxicity filters there that allows our platform to tell them if their comment may be tagged and so what it says is like hey remember please keep comments civil and if you don't um, this may not post publicly, although we will capture your comment. So what happens is the back end of public input, like when you're, you know, a, a builder in public input um, or an admin, you can actually see the ones that got flagged and then you can decide if you want those to post publicly or not. So it allows them to, uh, you know, post what, you know, say what they want to say, but just know that it's not going to feed into the public dialogue if they're like too aggressive or want to drop a bunch of like F-bombs or something. So those are some things that I don't think that are available in a lot of other platforms that can really help when it comes to actually like public process or public engagement surveying that are so important for these types of engagements. So yeah, a lot of a lot of things available here that you'll see. Um, yeah, that's probably all I need to say on that. <laughs> I could keep going, but why, not, why would I do that? Yeah. <laughs> cool. So I'll go ahead and save that. So Murphy uh, can't continue talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and preview the live site like we did last time, just to show how quickly and simple these um, these changes reflect here. So there we there we go. We actually built out a, a question beforehand, um, but here's the one that we just added right here. And if I start typing in all caps, for example, it should display a uh, toxic. Okay. That's Depends it. on if we had it on. Don't type a uh, yeah. cuss word in there. Let's not do that. Yeah, um, not but, do that. <laughs> I don't know if we had the filter on, and I don't remember what the settings were. But um, but yeah, if you start doing that, you'll start. You'll see like a little filter pop. A little pop up comes up that says like, "Hey, remember to keep your comments civil." Civil. So, um, but I, I think this is live. So if anybody wants to go to this, it's publicinput.com uh, forward slash x two no two three three four so it's x two three three four and uh sophie could create a uh like a separate url and like create like a vanity url or something to put that at and so that's available too but this is like our our system assigns a random uh numbers and letters to anything that you create so yeah perfect awesome um so i'll move into a couple of examples of some of our uh, some cities or, or counties that have set up um, their surveys using some of those those question types that we discussed earlier. Um, this is a great example of, um, I think it was Town of Cary, North Carolina. Um, they were wanting to implement some different sidewalk features um, on Chapel Hill Road here. So they actually used that um, select multiple options. Um, and they provided images for that so that, you know, you could, you could visualize sort of what these were, these options here were, were referring to. Um, here's a good one. So like pedestrian refuge island, how would anybody know what that was and what that was referring to if they didn't have a picture of it there? I certainly, you know, did not know what that term was. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that's like it's written by like an engineer and like the public has no idea what that means. But the picture that fixes the problem. So like now we get it. Right, exactly. I love it. So, yeah, that's a great, this is just a great example of kind of using that, the, using those images as a, as a tool to kind of aid 
uh, education as well as you know making sure that we're the feedback we're getting is relevant. Who likes this question here that's ever done public engagement? It's like, hey, they say they want brick pavers until you until you know that the, until you say that if we're going to do this, we're going to have to levy some taxes. So, <laughs> and, then, and then they're like, hey, we're out. We're, we'll just put the just paint the white ones on there, please. <laughs> so, yeah, good stuff. Oh, hey, oh, this is a great example. Um, do you want to do the Christmas example first? Yeah, sure. And we'll pop it. Yeah, and I'm glad you were going to show this one, but let, yeah, we'll pop back over to this one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I we're talking a lot about. So this is you know a comprehensive master plan. This was uh, we we're we were planning some sidewalks and this is kind of more fitting into like our public works and planning departments here. Um, but you know engagement doesn't always have to be these uh, large scale initiatives um, or you know high stakes where we absolutely have to gather feedback. They can also be sort of more low stakes, maybe some kind of lightweight, maybe some that are fun and relevant, um, ways to, to gather information and gather um, engagement from our, our residents. So I've actually pulled up, this is a really good example um, of that here. So Town of Zebulon, um, they held a yard decorating contest last Christmas, um, and they invited their residents to participate in this contest through one of their survey pages. So they built this out um, and residents were asked to, you know, select which home had the best light decorations. And they, this was a huge success. They got 702 responses on this. I love that. Uh, and this is a pretty, this is a town, I think of about 5,000 residents. So that's that kind of number, that kind of statistic right there just shows, you know, how powerful, even something lightweight and kind of um, low stake engagement opportunity can be. I love that. I think one thing that you, they could have done here is like when you have this type of options, like say like, hey, do you want to be involved in future uh, engagement efforts and, and allow them to subscribe because you got 700 and some people here. Now, our platform has the ability to create a CRM. Basically, it's like a community relationship management tool. So it's like all the people that have engaged, we can we can put them into uh, a, like a database, which we can use for communication purposes in the future. So you've got 700 people here that came to participate in this. It's like, imagine we want to text message them in the future and invite them to a future engagement effort, or maybe email them and let them know what's what's latest in the community. Is like, you can use these types of things to help grow that database so that you get as much feedback as possible for all those in initiatives and things that you have coming down the line as well. Um, great, great example. I love this. Absolutely. I'll navigate over to the uh, comprehensive master plan, Murphy, if you kind of want to. Yeah. So I, I love that you use this one, this in the example, because there's a couple of things that are really cool here is that in this case, the consultant, it licensed this. In this case, it's consultant actually built this. Um, and But the agency wanted to have the things built on their website. But if anybody's ever done this, I've talked to enough consultants to know how difficult it can be to like work with a like the agency's like webmaster to just do simple updates. It's like constant communication and sending over drafts and things is like, but what they did here is they were able to create the public input page like we're doing, like we just did on, on Sophie's page and actually embed that on the, on the site of their, their client. And so then all they needed to do is build what they wanted to and create all the engagement opportunities they wanted to in public input and the embed automatically posted on the uh, the client site. So it's a great, great way to do that. And, and actually, I didn't even think we were going to do this one, but yeah, there's the idea board is, is up here as well. Um, you can see the how many people like agreed with certain comments. So this is like an example of how uh, an idea board can be uh, you know, placed on a project site to create engagement around that. So uh, that's a great example there. Yeah, I wanted to also uh, look at this mapping tool thing they did here. Um, this is a, a, another good example of one of our more kind of um, interesting or sort of just advanced question types that you can build into these surveys. Um, and so what they did here with this is they, this is essentially a map of their community and they asked folks um, to just pin on a map some of their different concerns around this, um, this their transportation system that they've got here. Yeah, that's great. And they use our platform to create those different pins. So on the side there in the, you know, in the legend, there's a number of different options of like what they wanted to comment about. So by looking at the map, you can see different areas like uh, an area where there needs to be improvement or it's dangerous. And they just selected the right pin 
But then, and I think Sophie's going to show this, that you can get a lot more context than that. So I'll let you get into that, Sophie. Yeah. So if I actually click on one of these pins, I can actually see the the exact comment that, um, so they not only were they, are they able to actually pin on a map of where their concern is, where they wanted to, uh, you know, draw attention to, but they can actually provide more context and type in a comment right there. And it's all going to be associated with that pin they put on the map. I love that. A couple things here. You see there, it's got got a got a uh, someone's name there. You don't have to have names on there. That's a that's an admin decision uh, whether you're gathering that or whether you show that. Looks like they didn't make it. Look at this one doesn't have that. So I think that's a great example. I'm glad we showed that because you can decide how much uh, freedom the people that are engaging have when it comes to providing information. If they want to share, they can. If they don't, they don't have to. Um, one thing I don't know if they had available here, but you can also allow the public to upload images to these comments as well. So like, hey, this is a dangerous area or like, what is, is it? Uh, Greenway is awesome for cycling and walking is like you maybe that person wants to show a picture of like a bunch of people on the Greenway. And it's like, hey, see, this is awesome. And you can load that image there as well. Also, like we, we've seen clients use this platform for like almost like a 411 or like uh, fix it. And they'll allow them to put a pin and put an image to say like, hey, this thing's broken or there's a pothole here. Uh, and they can actually load an image to get that additional context um, besides besides just the text and the type pin type. It's like now we got an image. It's like, what more do you need? It's like, it's, it's great. Yeah, awesome. Um, so actually switching gears a little bit here, I did kind of notice they had some um, content, additional content here on the side. So it looks like they've got a an FAQ bar here um, where they can answer some kind of more frequently asked questions. Um, looks like they've also got a timeline because there was different phases um, of this project here. Um, this is, all this content right here is actually something you can um, set up on that same survey building page. Um, so let me navigate over there really quick just to show that there's all different types of content. So we were looking at the questions but now if we wanted to add other different types of um, things to this, we can. So there's that project timeline, um, really useful if we've got different phases of that project. Um, we can add a document section. Maybe we referenced uh, like a PDF or um, maybe there's like some PowerPoint slides that we wanna make available to the public. Um, we can also plug in an upcoming meeting um, or a past meeting or event that happened right on this page. Um, and then also a YouTube video. So we actually saw this uh, back on Rancho Cucamongo's um, workshop site yeah. that we had last yeah. time. We had that little kind of quick, quick explainer video. That was um, a great example of like, yeah, using a video to explain what's going on. And they did it about that project page so that people knew how to navigate around it and what was expected of them. I think it was excellent. Yeah, absolutely. And then our frequently asked questions bar here. Um, and then, of course, we can always embed different signups. So, you know, sign up if you want to receive updates on this project or sign up if you're interested in other engagement opportunities, um, all kinds of different, you know, sign ups, sign up forms and topics of communications that um, you can also be kind of collecting subscribers for as well. That's excellent. Love it. Awesome. Well, I'm going to stop sharing. That's all I had to show for this session. Perfect. What's coming up next, Murphy, for the, our next session? So we're, now we're kind of doing, we were planning on doing reach, like hardcore reach for uh, the first four sessions, but it looks like we're going into like a little bit of a mix. And I believe we're going to be talking about some of our multilingual surveying tools. Um, I believe that may be coming up. Uh, text to participate is another thing. I don't know if that's next week, but text to participate is a massively uh, useful feature because those surveys that like we just built out that question, uh, we can actually turn that into a text to participate version. So someone without access to internet can still engage and provide their feedback, which is massively helpful for folks with like low access to internet or like a lot of folks use their phones as like their only means of internet. And they're not going to, they don't want to go to a big heavy website to, to use their limited data. They may instead just prefer to do something via text message. Also great in transit. I can tell you, like transit the demographics that ride transits vary so much uh, that it is great to have the ability to, to be able to do something that has some offline. So if I don't have a smartphone, I can still engage. And so you can put those opportunities to engage by texting into a, a, a phone uh, phone number and actually start taking a survey. So we'll actually show how that's built uh, eventually one of these weeks. Um, I don't know specifically what's next week because I didn't do my homework. <laughs> so, uh, but, but, uh, 
<laughs> we'll, we'll be talking best practices and actually showing some of the platform and how you can build that. That's the biggest thing we're going to be doing here today. I mean, every every Friday we're going to be doing that uh, so that we can inform, uh, educate, inform, share what other folks are doing, but also give you a chance to see how to do that in public input as well. So um, did I miss anything? No, I think you're good. Make sure to tune in again. We're trying to do this one o'clock every Friday right here on this project page. It's publicinput.com forward slash public input live, uh, publicinput.com forward slash public input live. We'll be here uh, every Friday, one o'clock Eastern time. Uh, so we we'll hope you join us here next week as well. And uh, thanks for tuning in and leave your comments below. We'll answer any comments as soon as we can. And uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. Thanks everyone. Bye.